Central Bicol State University of Agriculture marked a new milestone for the Institute of Development Education as it became the College of Development Education in a Level 4 State University. with competitive students and high-caliber faculty members who are passionate to brave the new world and serve communities, are able to meet global standards as ISA and ISO compliant, and currently Level 3 AACOP accredited. This is CDE. Being a center of development in teacher education in the region, since 2016, CDE supports the university as a valuable instrument in achieving its vision and mission. With its dedicated administration and dynamic faculty and staff, the college with the university's trusts, which are instruction, extension, research and production, innovates, strengthens, and sustains valuable programs and projects that extend beyond CBSA's reach. The college reinforces a systemic approach to maintain smooth planning process that supports quality assurance and intensifies collaboration through its creation of business and external affairs. From careful planning, monitoring and supervision, to review and improvement process, the system checks and balances a rounded institutional management gearing towards quality, curricular offering of the secondary education program. Making the name for oneself entails a huge effort and responsibility. CDE produces top-notch graduates, ready to take on life's challenges, and the journey begins from their success in the licensure examination for teachers. To their seats, as reputable and highly respected professionals in the field. Good afternoon. I am very pleased to talk about the graduates of Central People's State University of Agriculture. We have a lot of them here. They are teachers, our school officials. Some of them are also our division officials, public school district supervisor, and I think we even have assistant school division superintendents. Congratulations, BSEA, for being able to contribute to the good of the children, especially in the side of the country, um, particularly in the schools of the Camarines. Thank you very much. CDE ensures clientels and graduates are exposed to effective and innovative learning experiences demanded by time, not only through its state-of-the-art facilities and infrastructures, Honing noteworthy talents, aided by duly crafted student programs and organizations. Developing skills and competencies along PPST and international standards. 
recognizing achievements along a strong PTA support through cash incentives and assistance to students and building positive attributes for a well-rounded individual. By being part of a state university, the college fortifies students as well as its faculty to involve in research based on its carefully crafted research agenda, answering pressing issues and concern in the region. Students participate and present their undergraduate researches in the annual regional forum in line with the curriculum and instruction and are published in the Book of Abstract and College Research Journal. The university motivates more faculty researches through its policies and incentives by deloading on workload to allot time for research engagement and university funding through the research division. Under the guidance of the University Research Director and also a core faculty of CDE, the college continues to progress in gaining recognition in research-related endeavors. The college houses published faculty members in various national and international referee journals and are cited by other researchers worldwide. The Central Bico State University of Agriculture Extension Services Division serve as the bridge between the university and the community. It strives to bring changes. It works to create impacts on the lives of its clients, including farmers and fisher folks. It is guided by its direction to strengthen partner communities through capability building. Empower farmers and fisher folks through advisory services. Model technologies, best agrofishery practices and innovations, enhance in agrofishery extension knowledge, products and services, and improve policy and environment and governance for the enhancement of agriculture, fishery and extension services. 
Extension Services Division has an increasing number of extension projects addressing the needs of different communities that are aligned and supportive with the priority academic programs offered by CBSUA. These projects are managed and implemented by faculty extension implementers from different colleges of the university. Research-based technologies on different agricultural and entrepreneurial innovations are disseminated in various community learning sites of the Extension Services Division. These technologies are being campaigned to interested farmers and entrepreneurs for adoption. The division applies diverse modalities and strategies in extension project implementation and dissemination of technologies such as establishing technology demonstration sites in and off campus, adapting a barangay or schools, establishing technology focus centers, and conducting capability enhancement training and seminars through limited face-to-face, -face, online, and radio. The university has partnerships and linkages with LGUs, NGOs, SMEs, industries, and other organizations, local and international, that support the advocacy of the university extension services. These efforts benefit the Bicolano farming families and other clients who became the university's technology adapters. All these initiatives are directed toward achieving the goal of the Extension Services Division. Progress, the progress of its clients, their knowledge, their livelihood, and restored building resilient, sustainable, and empowered communities. Central Bicol State University of Agriculture marked a new milestone for the Institute of Development Education as it became the College of Development Education in a Level 4 State University. with competitive students and high-caliber faculty members who are passionate to brave the new world and serve communities, are able to meet global standards as ISA and ISO compliant, and currently Level 3 AACOP accredited. This is CDE. Being a center of development in teacher education in the region since 2016, CDE supports the university as a valuable instrument in achieving its vision and mission.
With its dedicated administration and dynamic faculty and staff, the college with the university's trusts, which are instruction, extension, research and production, innovates, strengthens, and sustains valuable programs and projects that extends beyond CBSEA's reach. The college reinforces a systemic approach to maintain smooth planning process that supports quality assurance and intensifies collaboration through its creation of business and external affairs. From careful planning, monitoring and supervision, to review and improvement process, the system checks and balances a rounded institutional management gearing towards quality curricular offering of the secondary education program. Making the name for oneself entails a huge effort and responsibility. CDE produces top-notch graduates ready to take on life's challenges and the journey begins from their success in the licensure examination for teachers. To their seats, as reputable and highly respected professionals in the field. Good afternoon. I am very pleased to talk about the graduates of Central People's State University of Agriculture. We have a lot of them here. They are teachers, our school officials. Some of them are also our division officials, public school district supervisor, and I think we even have assistant schools division superintendents. Congratulations, CBSEA, for being able to contribute to the good of the children, especially in this side of the country, and particularly in the schools of Deaf and Camarines. Thank you very much. CDE ensures clientels and graduates are exposed to effective and innovative learning experiences demanded by time, not only through its state-of-the-art facilities and infrastructures, honing noteworthy talents aided by duly crafted student programs and organizations, developing skills and competencies along PPSD and international standards, recognizing achievements along a strong PTA support through cash incentives and assistantship to students and building positive attributes for a well-rounded individual. By being part of a state university, the college fortifies students as well as its faculty to involve in research based on its carefully crafted research agenda answering pressing issues and concern in the region. Students participate and present their undergraduate researches in the annual regional forum in line with the curriculum and instruction and are published in the Book of Abstract and College Research Journal. The university motivates more faculty researches through its policies and incentives by deloading on workload to allot time for research engagement and university funding through the research division. Under the guidance of the university research director and also a core faculty of CDE, the college continues to progress in gaining recognition in research-related endeavors. The college houses published faculty members in various national and international referee journals and are cited by other researchers worldwide. Several faculty researchers are housed in the secondary education program and are notable for their indexed citations. Manifestation of expertise and faculty 
that excels in big research projects that are aligned to BSED program are able to win external funding from other organizations locally, nationally, and internationally. President of Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, Philippines. And these endeavors allow institutional and external collaborations as well. Research-based technologies has also successfully interfaced with college extension projects and are now copyrighted for teaching purposes. The extension program of secondary education has strong advocacy towards the development of its clientele. It is anchored on the university and college agenda content knowledge and pedagogy, agriculture and environment, and competence and capability building. Package technologies served as interface of research, extension, and production. Administrators, faculty coordinators, and students actively conduct the needs assessment, extension activities, yeah! I love science! and monitoring and post evaluation. Collaborating agencies help the program in the conduct of its activities. Farm families' approach to good agricultural practices capacitates 4-H members and farm families with generous funding from Agricultural Training Institute. Surat Bicol promotes Bicol, Filipino, and English writings through literary works and development of IEC materials. Science Mobile Laboratory develops students' love for science through experiments and enhances teachers' methodologies. Lastly, Touching the Lives, now on its ninth year, strengthens parental and school involvement for a better scholastic achievement of their children. This extension program greatly impacted the lives of its clientele over the years as its focus for student and teachers' impact studies. Na develop po sa itong attitude ni na i-appreciate ang nature, ang pagtatanom, ang ang bonding po with family na nagiging productive po si Teme kasi ito yung pagtanom ni na Hanggang sa mag-abot itong time na magbunga na siya, pero na-enjoy mi po itong ano, yung mga moments. Sa pigtaw, suporta ka ito sa family farming. Sir man sa Central Bicol State University, salamat pong maray sa maray-maray na programa. Salamat! Ang touching the life, i-guide mo yung samo yung mga akin para sa tamang tinatakin na sa eskwilahan na ipabayaan ng pag-eskwila and then nakasuporta kami for financial as in kung ano pa mga bagay para sa mga ating dapat mas maging magayon, na, magayon ang buhay ka sa inyong pamilya sa mga ating. Thank you! Due to the pandemic, the program explored the digital platforms for wider dissemination and viewership and for international partnerships. While the college walks on a global landscape through the internationalization initiatives of the university under Dr. Alberto N. Perez's leadership as president, the secondary education program maintained a clear link with the other mandates, extension, research, production, and instruction, as seen in the planning of the internationalization trusts 
up until the very launching. In spite of the current pandemic that shocked the world, CDE maintained its global partnerships under Students' Internship Program or SIAP, Academic and Cultural Engagement Program or ASEP, and C Teacher Project or Pre-Service Student Exchange Program in Southeast Asia. including the International Credit Transfer or ICPT and University of Mataram Collaboration. Various activities such as webinars, conferences, and cultural sharings are offered and provided by these international linkages for the academic, cultural, and economic growth and advanced potentials of both universities. Generous sponsorships and funding from the partner institutions and organizations increased more student and faculty. Ohayo gozaimasu. Magandang umaga. Naimbag ng agsapa, kadatayo amin. And good morning to every one of us. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the academic collaboration with Hiroshima University. Now, without further ado, let us start, formally start our program for this morning. And may I ask everyone to stand, please? We will stand for the, our prayer for this morning. Let us bow our heads and put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for gathering all of us today. May you bestow your guidance and blessings so that we can enjoy and appreciate its significance in our lives. Bless everyone who are present here today, that each one of us may be able to share our knowledge, understanding, and wisdom for your glory and honor. May the various activities related to this event be a success through your intervention. We all ask of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
Good morning, Professor Takuria. Good morning, dear faculty members, and good morning to all our students, and of course, our BSU interns. Good morning. Um, I will be presenting to you, Professor Takuria, the uh, uh, video where we can also uh, give some information about the College of Education. So our intern, Sir Briggs, could you please help me? Thank you. To Central Bicol State University of Agriculture marked a new milestone for the Institute of Development Education as it became the College of Development Education in a Level 4 State University. with competitive students and high-caliber faculty members who are passionate to brave the new world and serve communities, are able to meet global standards as ISA and ISO compliant, and currently Level 3 AACOP accredited. This is CDE. Being a center of development in teacher education in the region since 2016, CDE supports the university as a valuable instrument in achieving its vision and mission. With its dedicated administration and dynamic faculty and staff, the college with the university's trusts, which are instruction, extension, research and production, innovates, strengthens, and sustains valuable programs and projects that extends beyond CBSEA's reach. The college reinforces a systemic approach to maintain smooth planning process that supports quality assurance and intensifies collaboration through its creation of business and external affairs. From careful planning, monitoring and supervision, to review and improvement process, the system checks and balances a rounded institutional management gearing towards quality curricular offering of the secondary education program. Making the name for oneself entails a huge effort and responsibility. CDE produces top-notch graduates ready to take on life's challenges and the journey begins from their success in the licensure examination for teachers. To their seats, as reputable and highly respected professionals in the field. Good afternoon. I am very pleased to talk about the graduates of Central Depot State University of Agriculture. We have a lot of them here. They are teachers, our school officials. Some of them are also our division officials, public school district supervisor, and I think we even have assistant school division superintendents. Congratulations, BSEA, for being able to contribute to the good of the children, especially in this side of the country, um, particularly in the schools of Depth and Camarines. Thank you very much. CDE ensures clientels and graduates 
are exposed to effective and innovative learning experiences demanded by time, not only through its state-of-the-art facilities and infrastructures, honing noteworthy talents aided by duly crafted student programs and organizations, developing skills and competencies along PPST and international standards, recognizing achievements along a strong PTA support through cash incentives and assistance to students, and building positive attributes for a well-rounded individual. By being part of a state university, the college fortifies students as well as its faculty to involve in research based on its carefully crafted research agenda, answering pressing issues and concern in the region. Students participate and present their undergraduate researches in the annual regional forum in line with the curriculum and instruction and are published in the Book of Abstract and College Research Journal. The university motivates more faculty researches through its policies and incentives by deloading on workload to allot time for research engagement and university funding through the research division. Under the guidance of the University Research Director and also a core faculty of CDE, the college continues to progress in gaining recognition in research-related endeavors. The college houses published faculty members in various national and international referee journals and are cited by other researchers worldwide. Several faculty researchers are housed in the secondary education program and are notable for their indexed citations. Manifestation of expertise and faculty that excels in big research projects that are aligned to BSED program are able to win external funding from other organizations locally, nationally, and internationally. President of Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, Philippines. And these endeavors allow institutional and external collaborations as well. Research-based technologies has also successfully interfaced with college extension projects and are now copyrighted for teaching purposes. The extension program of secondary education has strong advocacy towards the development of its clientele. It is anchored on the university and college agenda. Content knowledge and pedagogy. Agriculture and environment and competence and capability building. Package technologies serve as interface of research, extension, and production. Administrators, faculty coordinators, and students actively conduct the needs assessment Extension activities. Yay! I love science! And monitoring and post evaluation. Collaborating agencies help the program in the conduct of its activities. Farm families' approach to good agricultural practices capacitates 4 H members and farm families with generous funding from Agricultural Training Institute.
Surat Bicol promotes Bicol, Filipino, and English writings through literary works and development of IEC materials. Science Mobile Laboratory develops students' love for science through experiments and enhances teachers' methodologies. Lastly, Touching the Lives, now on its ninth year, strengthens parental and school involvement for a better scholastic achievement of their children. This extension program greatly impacted the lives of its clientele over the years as its focus for student and teachers' impact studies. The develop po some itong attitude ni na i-appreciate ang nature, ang pagtatanong, ang ang bonding po with family na nagiging productive po si Teme kasi ito yung pagtanong ni na hanggang sa mag-abot itong time na magbunga na siya garo na-enjoy mi po tong ano yung mga moments and graphic uh, tawag suporta ka ito sa family farming sirang man sa Central Bicol State University salamat pong maray sa maray maray na programa salamat touching the life Uh, I-guide niyo sa mga yung mga akin para sa tamang tinatakin na sa eskwilahan. Dahil pabayaan ng pag-eskwila. And then, nakasuporta kami for financial as in kung ano pa mga bagay para sa mga akin. Dapat mas maging magayon na, magayon ang buhay ka sa itong pamilya sa mga akin. Thank you! Due to the pandemic, The program explored the digital platforms for wider dissemination and viewership and for international partnerships. While the college walks on a global landscape through the internationalization initiatives of the university under Dr. Alberto N. Perez's leadership as president, the secondary education program maintained a clear link with the other mandates extension, research, production, and instruction, as seen in the planning of the internationalization trusts up until the very launching. In spite of the current pandemic that struck the world, CDE maintained its global partnerships under Students Internship Program or CIAP, Academic and Cultural Engagement Program or ASEP. and see teacher project or pre-service student exchange program in Southeast Asia. Including the International Credit Transfer or ICPP and University of Mataram collaboration. Various activities such as webinars, conferences, and cultural sharings are offered and provided by these international linkages for the academic, cultural, and economic growth and advanced potentials of both universities. Generous sponsorships and funding from the partner institutions and organizations increase more student and faculty participation to the programs. Today, CDE's present is felt by high government offices. Despite the challenges brought by the pandemic, we continue our efforts to intensify our partnerships with universities in the UN. It was an honor to represent CBSUA in the Global Training Initiative Program of North Carolina State University and is gradually recognized for its initiatives and accomplishments that motivates sustainable transfer of knowledge and technologies between countries.
Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Professor Takuya. So those are about the our college, the College of Development Education. May I have to recognize the uh, presence of our Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Anna Imiranya. Thank you so much, ma'am, for coming and for gracing our event this morning. Okay, before we proceed, may I introduce to you, sir, the... Uh, 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 structure and the faculty members of the College of Development Education. The College of Subcourse, headed by the President, Dr. Alberto Enaperi. And then, of course, one of the Vice Presidents, Dr. Ana Imiranya, the Vice President for Academic Affairs. We also have Professor Celerino Villasol Jr., our campus administrator, and then, of course, yours truly, the Dean of the College of Development Education. We also have uh, Professor Kennedy A. Beltran, the program chairperson, elementary education. He is here. Sir, may I request you to stand, please? Also, what lecturers this morning? And then we have Professor Karen V. Perez, uh, the program chairperson of the secondary education program. She is on the study leave. Okay. And then may I introduce to you also, sir, the faculty under the elementary education program, and some of them, particularly the science faculty, are with us. And I request them to stand if they are called. Okay. We have Dr. Hermelina F. Asanias. Dr. Christopher B. Dasser. We have Ms. Lenzel B. Manaco. We also have Mr. Aquilino P. Mateo Jr. Dr. Charlie P. Nacario. Dr. Melinda P. Pan. I guess she is here. Good morning, ma'am. 
And then we have Professor Mary Grace B. Polvoriza. She is also here. Next is Dr. Ramona Isabel S. Ramirez, uh, the Vice President for Research and Innovation. And then we have Dr. Glenn Ire de Silia, Dr. Alan A. Tubi. And under the secondary education program, we have the following faculty. Ms. Christia Shina S. Amparo, she is here. She is covering the event, ma'am, and she is also the moderator. And then we have Professor Nida T. Aquino, Dr. Maria Carla Narcisa L. Baduya, uh, Professor Nelia A. Barce, Dr. Maylin T. Balderas. We also have uh, Professor Imarchi Basagre. He is here. So please stand to be recognized. He is on leave, but uh, to show his support to the college, he attends this event. Okay, we have also, of course, the IRO, Professor Julie Amara M. Bonvilla. She's here. And then the Vice President for Business and External Affairs, Professor Cesar Armando Escamba Sr. Then we have Professor Ana Cecilia B. Fajardo. Uh, Professor Maria Karen B. Fajardo. We also have uh, Professor Wilton P. Formalejo. Dr. Claribel C. Haber. She is the Dean of the Graduate School. And then uh, Dr. Ludivico B. Humiliano, I think. Sir, yes, sir, sir. Thank you. And then his, uh, his partner, of course, Dr. Myra Luz M. Humiliano. Is she here already? Ah, she is on travel. Okay. And then Dr. Jerry A. Margate. We have also the husband of our Vice President for Academic Affairs, uh, the Professor Verhel Pimiranya. He is on leave. Is that the leave? Okay, and then the uh, uh, coordinator for international linkages of the college, uh, Dr. Cherila B. Montades. I think she's here. She's with us, sir, this morning. Okay, Dr. Ayan Victor Pinebres. Okay, Ma'am Karen Perez. Okay, I'm also one of the faculty members of the college. And then we have Dr. Leopoldo R. R. Gramsona, Jr. Uh, Professor Ricardo C. Anson, Jr. Okay, and we also have part-time faculty members. We have Ms. Christine Bostarga, Mr. Paul Limuel L. Cabrera, Mrs. Marianne R. Elegado, and Mr. Lawrence F. Pascual is here, sir. Ms. Angelica Rose de Villegas. And for the staff, we have Ms. Annalisa Chilascota and Ms. Island P. Reitana. So those are the people behind the success of the College of Development Education. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Mom Raquel. And shall we now proceed with the introduction of our resource speakers to be presented by Mrs. Christia Shina Amparo Tubale. Bob. Thank you so much, sir. Good morning once again, everyone. Good morning, sir. Our lecturer for today is an accomplished individual who has earned um, both master's and doctorate degree from Hiroshima University. He currently holds the position of associate professor in the Graduate School of Humanities and Social Sciences at the university. In addition to his role at Hiroshima University, he also serves as a lecturer and research fellow in the Graduate School of Education at the same institution, as well as in other higher education institutions. His research interests are, are, the, are, are diverse, with a focus on science education, metacognition, evaluation, social sciences, pedagogy, and curriculum pedagogy. He has published 59 academic papers in these fields, which attest to his expertise and contribution to the academic community. Furthermore, 
He is a prolific author with 16 published books that have expanded the scholarship and knowledge in his areas of expertise. His knowledge and teaching have been sought after by several universities in Taiwan, China, and Singapore. He, where he was also, where he also served as a lecturer. Friends, let's give a warm welcome to Professor Takuya Matsura. Uh, good morning, everyone. And thank you for coming today, this morning. And thank you for Dr. Uh, Michael Ripper and uh, all staff, so uh, all students. Thank, thank you for coming. Uh, thank, uh, thank you for this warm uh, ceremony. And so, so. Okay, so uh, as far as so I I have to introduce uh, my university or my faculty uh, at briefly. So well, Hiroshima University, one of the national university in Japan. So um, uh, the origin of our university is uh, College of Education or College of Science and the College of Liberal Arts. So these colleges are the origin of uh, our university. So historically, so we uh, try to uh, educate the uh, student teacher or uh, historically. And now, so in our, fac our faculty is big. So from elementary school teacher and uh, high school, middle school or the high school, um, education researcher or psychologist or Japanese language teacher and so on. So uh, well, the number of faculty uh, about about 90 profession, uh, professional uh, uh, and other uh, office staff. So we have many uh, students from, especially, uh, for example, the uh, elementary, so about 100 uh, students per each grade. And secondary level, of course, so much more small. Uh, for example, my science education area, so about 26 uh, students per each grade. And um, historically, so we have a uh, graduate school or, uh, for master and doctor course. So in education area, so doctor course is very rare uh, past days. So, but we have uh, historically the doctor course. So this is uh, uh, our University is one of the famous university, uh, especially for the uh, education area. So, 
today. So, um, yeah, I hope to uh, talk about many contexts. But so, uh, today, first time, and so because of the time uh, limitation, so I just introduced the simple framework of the, our uh, Japanese science uh, framework. But at first, please look at this picture. Uh, do you know what this? Really? What's this? Pineapple. Yes, I understand. I agree. So this picture I uh, picked up yesterday. You are far uh, near the this campus. Like pineapple. Um, this is a, one of the major food in Japan. Uh, basically, so we just show this food uh, ready to eat station, not this station. So I yesterday I uh, showed this. Situation. I'm very interested. Do you have any question or feeling or notice from this picture? No question. This is a tradition in general. No, no notice, no question. Or something new. You. I have something new from this. Probably it is different. So, this is the same pineapple. Do you have any? Do you? Generate some question you will notice about this. Something? No? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Sir, I noticed that the fruit is still unripe. <laughs> oh, still ripe. And um, more one step. So it's not so clear. Yes, too. Please say again, everyone. I mean, it seems to have a flower on the fruit. Yes, flowers. And more. Of course, this is flower, but my image is one pineapple. But we can find many flowers in one piece of the pineapple. What is meaning? Like a sunflower. Do you understand this meaning? One for one for one seed. In the case of the sunflower, then uh, of course you can find one sunflower, but include many 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 small flowers. So we can get many seeds in one sunflower. So in pineapple case. Of course, I understand this figure, but I can I find it so the small flowers in each box. What's this? How to um, construct the pineapple fruit? This is a my new something new to uh, 
watch the this final part. So it is we can find the real situation, but in supermarket probably I cannot find this question because why just look pineapple? No flowers. So I cannot understand or I cannot generate some question or some notice. So because why? So I use this picture. So of course science is knowledge is of course important, but not only the uh, knowledge, I think. So traditionally, so Japanese science teacher uh, stress on the uh, opening time, uh, especially like this, especially in the new contents. So of course, some not good teacher say, please open your textbooks page 99. Uh, we talked about today, we talked about this and so on. Or please read the textbooks and so on. But uh, some good teacher prepared some pictures or some real materials or some activities that uh, we will start, uh, we will study tomorrow or uh, this week or this month and so on. So, this is a, um, one of the uh, important points, but not written in Haiku. <laughs> so, because why uh, I use this picture at first? Okay, so I move to the uh, framework of the uh, Japanese Haiku. We call Haiku um, course of study. So, the Japanese curriculum is divided about 10 years each. So, about, but, so, but uh, the curriculum is very simple. Uh, no, uh, there are no little in detail. But so we prepared additionally to the curriculum that explanatory documents uh, this will be prepared for each school type and each subject area. For example, the uh, middle school science or elementary science or high school physics, with, uh, high school chemistry and so on. So just now, so everyone, not only this teacher, everyone can read this book via uh, on page or uh, library. So this is a, a base but um, something said to the Bible for the teacher. And then so I talked about the textbook. Um, in Japanese case, uh, all official textbooks must be certified by the mix uh, means of education. This is an uh, official text. Of course, there are some um, subtext or uh, workbook and so on, but uh, this is the official textbook. So for elementary and middle school level, this is free for every student. But uh, in high school level, uh, they need to pay. But um, compulsory level, uh, all textbook, all official textbooks are free for every student. But they need to pass the certification by the means of education. Uh, there are some private companies. Uh, for example, the middle school science, uh, we have about five companies. Five companies continue to uh, prepare their science textbooks. But now, so Japanese population is uh, slightly in, uh, decreasing. So, Probably for the near future, uh, one of them will uh, <laughs> stop their publishing, probably. But basically, so this is a uh, basic uh, contents for 
student and for teacher. Uh, then, so there will be major revision to align with the curriculum revision. And um, sometimes, uh, usually, so one minor revision in the middle of the cycle. So, for example, uh, when we buy the new Ray-Ban, and after four years, uh, they uh, minor review. And next step is a major revision, and so on. Recently, we use the full color uh, text. Of course, about 30 or, 30 or 40 years ago, or of course, limited color. But, uh, but 20 years ago, from well, we use the full color text. So it's all the small uh, characters. So I just focus on the purpose of school science. Uh, this case is uh, middle school, but uh, elementary science and the high school is same way the situation. Uh, this is a, a semi-official or translated version. So probably you can find the uh, Japanese Next home page. Many of them are, uh, of course, Japanese, but uh, sometimes so, uh, course of study translated in English. Uh, okay, so I just uh, uh, saying that the aim, aim to develop students' competencies necessary to conduct scientific inquiry into natural objects, objects and phenomena through experiencing natural objects and phenomena, using discipline-based uh, epistemological, epistemological approaches of science, and conducting observations and experiments with a comprehensive, comprehensive vision. So, and we uh, set the three uh, sections. So, special ensure that student one is uh, Section one is uh, related to knowledge and skills. So deeper knowledge and understanding of natural objects and phenomena and uh, acquire fundamental skills for observations, uh, experiments, and other scientific activities necessary to conduct scientific inquiry. Um, second one is um, focus to the um, thinking, uh, judgment, and uh, present, presenting. So can also develop abilities to conduct scientific inquiry through conducting uh, oh, sorry, observations or experiments and other scientific activities. So this point is through scientific activities. So this is a first point. And the last one is that related to the attitude for students. So someone is so develop attitudes towards conducting scientific inquiry through acti uh, actively in experiencing natural objects and phenomena. So these are three main frameworks: so knowledge and skills and you know, thinking and attitude. These are a uh, uh, world subject in Japan. This is a uh, a fundamental framework for every uh, subject. Uh, so today I focus to the um, scientific inquiry process. Of course, probably so. Oh, not only in Japan. So this key term using worldwide. So uh, in Japanese case, so um, some documents for teachers, so showing the steps like this. So emphasis on learning through scientific inquiry and reorganize and clarify the process for scientific inquiry. So first one is the awareness of natural phenomena. 
那个 pineapple flower. Of course, so traditionally we say again, say again this process, but oppositely, it is difficult. Depends on the content. For example, the atom, can I aware from natural phenomena? Probably it is difficult because what I can see, show, and see and show. <laughs> so of course, so this, the, these are depends on the contents. But uh, if we can prepare the, some materials to uh, information, of course that include uh, some videos uh, and so on. So and uh, assignment of question or uh, make a hypothesis and planning and observation experiment and process result and consideration or representation and so on. Uh, historically, uh, traditionally, so we try to follow these steps. Uh, and additionally, so real station, uh, it is easy for elementary level because why the learning content is uh, that depends on the uh, student environment, very familiar context. So, uh, of course, we can uh, see, uh, we can touch, and so on. So, it is uh, easy. And another meaning, so the, in the textbooks level, so um, we prepare just only the contents. Our uh, textbooks include the steps of the inquiry, or especially in elementary level, we call problem solving. But so, uh, contents are uh, mm, showing for, uh, following the uh, problem solving steps. What is uh, your awareness, or what is the question, or how to solve, or uh, showing the process of the experiment and how to think from this uh, data and so on. So well uh, uh, prepared in textbooks, especially in elementary level. And recently, so middle school is same But high school level, it is difficult because why the uh, content is very wide and may deep. So, uh, uh, depends on the time limitation, uh, it is hard to find all steps. But uh, we um, tell to the science teacher, so of course, every content uh, includes inquiry process, not a uh, real situation. But sometimes, uh, please try to these steps. Uh, depends on the context. Some content is easy to uh, create the inquiry process, but sometimes uh, it is difficult. So please select the content and please try to do steps in once or twice per each semester <laughs> and so on. This is a uh, real situation. I finally, so I just showed the uh, science rooms. This case is an uh, elementary school. Uh, this school is this the new, new, newest one. <laughs> so very, very clear, uh, very beautiful. Of course, but so some schools are uh, very old, 20 years or 30 years, so not so beautiful. <laughs> but uh, this case is so, a very new one. So, of course, so we have some, some each classroom, and uh, sometimes we use the laboratory room. And depends on the teacher, but uh, the schools, they instruct on the science teaching, so uh, generally they use this room. But why so wide and and uh, some many materials, uh, some uh, many blackboards and so on. But it, it is useful for teaching. 
I'm also one of the sample of the blackboard writing before COVID-19. But um, this is a transition from an elementary level. Oh, elementary teacher write beautiful uh, characters, not me. I, I cannot, probably I cannot become an elementary teacher because why? <laughs> My character probably can can a student cannot only <laughs> so this is traditionally so well structured uh, uh, blackboard writing. This is a warm skill for teach, I think. Of course, so recently some teacher prepare uh, using some powerpoints uh, and so, but uh, freehand writing is very useful. So it depends on the student's uh, thinking or activity and so on. But so if you prepare some slides, uh, you must follow that you are preparing, not adjust to your students. And this is a very big problem, I think. Next one, please. Uh, this is a middle school case. Middle school case. Yeah, so probably season is probably winter. <laughs> so students wear the uh, uniform. Of course, in Japanese school case, uh, depends on the region or city. In the Tokyo area, probably some schools don't have a school in your home, but rural areas, sometimes we have a uh, school in homes uh, like this. Um, this uh, school, so sometimes we use a small group activities so at this case, the light and uh, the teleprompter, uh, for example, using the I'm a US president speaking, so like this. We can not show the text, but we, uh, I can show the text. How, what is the mechanism of the teleprompter? So students uh, using a whiteboard and a, uh, they think about the line of the uh, light. So sometimes we use about this type. Of, so one group in three or four students. It is a position. It is useful for like this or four, four, four. It is useful. But 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 okay. Of course. Sometimes, so we have a other style of the experiment, experiment room uh, table. So it depends on the uh, table. So in this case, so oh, mm, four or five students uh, assigned one table. So, oh, yes. Yes. OK, uh, thank you for listening. So this is very brief, uh, but Probably so, uh, a little bit to get image about the science education or science uh, lecturing and so on. Thank you for listening. Thank you, sir, for that very insightful lecture. For our next resource speaker, Mom. Thank you very much, sir. Later, we'll have the question and answer portion after our second lecture. Thank you very much. Now we proceed to our next speaker. Our next speaker or lecturer holds a bachelor's degree in biology education from CBSUA and master's degree from Bicol University. Currently, he serves as an assistant professor at Central Bicol State University of Agriculture and is pursuing a doctoral degree in development studies at the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. Additionally, he holds the position as chairperson for the College of Development Education at this university. With expertise in science and a proven track record of dependability, we can expect a truly engaging lecture from this distinguished professional. Friends, let us all welcome our very own Professor Kennedy Beltran. Thank you, Ma'am Sheena, for your very uh, thoughtful introduction. Mahayo gozaimasu. 
uh, Professor Takuya. Welcome to the Philippines, particularly to Central Bicol State University of Agriculture. To our students and colleagues in the college, good morning. So while our counterparts, or rather our student intern from Binget State University are doing their best to present my presentation. Uh, what we can glean about the topic of Professor Takuya is that uh, the curriculum of Japan is systematic and empirical in terms of its uh, guidelines and standards. Now, what we can have or what I'm going to share with you this morning is about an overview of the classroom practices in science education in the Filipino context. Next, please. Since uh, we have a, a limited time, allow me to share our, a little bit of history on how our curriculum started. So we have, we have to always look back on the root of what the curriculum offers to present. So for more than 327 years, uh, we have been, the Philippines have been colonized by the Spanish. And what they input to us is more on the religion-centered curriculum. This influences in colonization in our educa educational system had been profounded through American colonization in, in more than 11 years. In this Commonwealth American, they have given us an emphasis in the curriculum of moral values, orientation to democracy, and public schools. This is where our government transitioned from uh, democracy, transitioned to democracy. And our uh, the Japanese uh, time, you know, they have uh, imparted us the love of labor or the vocational education. Next. What is actually the curriculum in our country has? No? So we, we actually, uh, our curriculum is a picture of a Western country. Now we started with the kindergarten for one year, wherein the teachers in this particular uh, year level, the approach is more on uh, making of or understanding of the senses of the child. Then we have the elementary year level. What makes elementary grade level in the K-12 unique? It has this what we call mother tongue, a contextualized learning uh, towards the uh, local language of the students. And we have also the secondary, uh, which, which has now the senior high school. No? It has, in science education, we always look into this what we call spiral progression, where in the context of science are best fitted to each year level. Before, in the basic education curriculum, we have the uh, one is specialization per year level. For, for example, if you are in a grade 8 year level, your subject in science would be biology. But because of the K-12, to it had been uh, fused with the different specialization in sciences. Like for instance, uh, in first quarter, the science teacher will teach general science. This, on second quarter, the science teacher will teach chemistry. The third quarter, the science teacher will teach physics. And the fourth quarter, the science teacher will teach biology. So because of the spiral progression, students in the junior high school have the opportunity to choose their strands. And, and their strand would differ on their foreseeable uh, baccalaureate degree when, when they wanted to, to have their courses in college. For instance, if your strength is academic, particularly the, sci the STEM, we call it the STEM, science, uh, science, 
technology, engineering, and mathematics, you would want to benchmark on uh, in line with medicine courses or any other related technological courses in the field or in the, in the future. Then we have the tertiary education. A fused with the months of skills, for instance, you don't want to pursue already college degree, you can uh, enroll in TESDA or the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority. No, we're in, you will send yourself in a month long skills development. Then after such, you would uh, have the opportunity to look for a job, for a decent job. Then for the baccalaureate degrees, the post-baccalaureate degrees, your master's, your doctorate, or your post-doctorate with specializations in falls under this particular trap. And in the Philippine settings, there are four-year course, five-year or more courses. Then you have your master's degree and your PhD or EDD degree or doctorate degree. Now, allow me to look into the background of science or the K-12 science curriculum in the country. No? As we all know, when we speak of literacy in other fields, on, on the basic education curriculum, this pertains to the students should know how to write, should know how to read, and solve for it to take something. But in other fields, uh, this could entail to learn, relearn and unlearn. But in science curriculum, uh, you have to possess the five domains or parameters for you to be able to possess the aims of the science curriculum itself. We have the STE. No? This can be found in the science curriculum guide and it is uh, downloadable. No? So we have the scientifically, technologically, and environmentally literacy. These are the expectation of the curriculum to the students in science education. This literacy should have the uh, critical, the student must be critical thinker, a problem solver, responsible stewards ship of nature or environment, innovative and inventive, informed decision maker, and effective communicator. You can actually fuse this one to your learning plans or lesson plans. And how are you going to do that? From the preliminary down to your assessment, you can actually state what particular STA would you want to fill in in your topic. For example, you want to discuss, not yet po, uh, for example, you want to discuss more on the evaluative process of different parts of the plants. In the aims of science education with respect to the STA, you're going to identify now. Then by identifying the parts of STAs, you are little by little answering what is being asked of you by the curriculum guide. On the preliminary part, for instance, there's this what we call engage. By the way, uh, in making of the learning plans for science education, the science teachers usually used the seven E's. In the engagement part, you can fuse, no? you are not limited to one STE alone. You can fuse, let's say, for example, responsible keepers of the environment, wherein you're going, in, in your topic, you're going to let your student immerse to that particular concept. No, it is not the literal context of it, but you are fusing to their learning by application. A while back, Professor Takuya showed us a picture of a pineapple, right? That could be one of the strategy for the student to be motivated, and that may fit in to the aims of science education in the Philippines. How? by inferring to that particular context. You don't just show a picture without inferring or without analyzing the particular concept. Am I right? You just simply uh, post the picture, wait for the student to infer. So by not literally putting into the context of, of the aims of science education in the country, you are what? You are giving or you are addressing the needs for the curriculum guide 
to be what? Absorb cognitively, absorb psycho, psycho, psychomotor, and affectively. So we're in in making your learning plan, you have to fit in those. Okay? So uh, from 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 grade three to grade ten, that is what the science curriculum guide would want our student to learn from. Next, please. So according to the National Research Council in 2005, these four centered are considered best practice in science teaching. For a science teacher to consider him or herself be fitted in terms of best uh, executing his or her topic, he or she should have at least majority of this centered. And these are learner-centered, knowledge-centered, assessment-centered, and community-centered. So allow me to share with you one by one this best practice in science teaching. Next, please. All right. So it was been uh, for, for centuries now, no? it has been the work of Jen Jack Rousseau in pursuing this particular center. The learner centered. You should have at least seven, uh, let's say, for example, key areas for you to be able to, to have the uh, activity as a learner centered one, particularly in tertiary education. No? In, in elementary education, we use the lesson plan, some other school call it the learning plans. In tertiary, we follow the syllabus, wherein we fit it, what we expect from the course or from the program through ILO, or the intended learning outcomes. But in elementary uh, year levels, they have to follow the standards and competencies in the curriculum guide. Okay? One of the key areas in learner-centered is that the student must develop a strong relationship with others. There should not be a boundary between learning, whether it whether that particular boundary is of physical or of uh, financial or in their economic status. Because of the mantra of the Philippine Constitution, education for, for all, uh, there must uh, student must not be left behind. Because of that mantra, uh, government institutions or state universities and colleges, for instance, in the country, had given this platform to the learners or to the able and competent learners to earn a degree without tuition. That's what the government of the Philippines would want to our learners who don't have a financial or economic ability to send themselves to school. Here comes now the state universities and colleges like the Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, where in this particular uh, approaches or methodologies, teachers like me, teachers like us, we would want to share or impart to them what the government would want them to be in the future. Okay? So another is that Supported, the student must be supported in meeting fundamental, physical, physical, psychological, and safety needs. This is more of the climate or environmental climate of the school, wherein the student must be, the student should felt that they are safe, that they are secured. The third one is that fully embraced for who they are, accepting their preferences. We don't usually look into the uh, gender disparity. We accept everyone. And of course, uh, responsibility for their learning, exercising choice to pursue their interests and passions, and agency to shape their school environment. Because after all, our best product would be our student in the end of the course. 
then they have to have this solving ability so that they could actually answer what are the existing problems in the real world by, by not just looking into the books, but by application. Okay? And demonstrate mastery of clearly articulated learning objectives. How they are going to do that? By simply, by simply applying what they have understood in the topic. And lastly, they should have a flexibility. You know, you cannot show, in, in the Philippine context, when you graduated, you cannot choose where you wanted to work. No, the, the Department of Education in Japan, I, I believe it called it the Ministry of Education, they're going to send you to the school wherein they need you the most. So you cannot choose where you, I, I really love to work on this particular school. When you apply in the Department of Education, you cannot choose. The Department of Education will send you to the school that needed you. So that's what we call flexibility. In terms of activities, in terms of material or resources, we do, as a science teacher, the term called contextualization, what we have in the locality, what we can share, in particular in laboratories. I always uh, told my student that Whenever you were assigned in a coastal area or in a mountain area or school in the mountain areas, you, you cannot assure that the material in the laboratories there are complete. What, what can you do? You, you should have to be resourceful. And by doing so, you are little by little contextualizing the standards and competencies asked by you by the curriculum guide. So that's what we did as well in the university. But of course, with the support of the administration, little by little, we are addressing those, uh, let's say, for example, limitations in the academe. Okay? The second one is a knowledge center. What does it mean? This is more of putting more context to the topic. For instance, in science, I as a teacher, I always do diagnostic tests for me to gauge how far my student know my, my topic or the course. By doing such, little by little, I, I, I can pinpoint who among my learners should need more attention of with respect to particular specific topics. In this particular context, knowledge-centered this is more of providing students a rigorous content with respect to chemistry, physics, science, or earth and space. Also, here, you as a teacher should have a very clear academic focus. You should be objective. When I say objective, you have to religiously follow your intended learning outcomes for the tertiary and the standards and competencies for the elementary. Okay? The third one would be assessment-centered. Majority of us uses formative assessment, but this formative assessment is just a building block toward attaining what we should or what the students should in the topic. We actually don't usually have it graded, but rather a stepping stone to their summative assessment. But in some cases, if the summative assessment doesn't go very well, no, we actually get a portion from the formative assessment. What is the meaning of that? We don't just simply maligning what this formative assessment is all about, but of course, we just, as a teacher, we look into the formative assessment. Oh, the student are very oh, needs improvement on this particular topic. So what are we going to do now? So you do a, a factual recall. You do now a analyzing of your raw data with respect to their systems or with respect to their grades. Then if you found out that their summative 
is a little bit low or needs improvement, you get a little portion from the formative. And in the university, for example, in CBSUA, because of the pandemic, we shifted into three assessment forms. Assessment one, two, and three that is fused in our syllabi. But of course, uh, with that assessment, we always follow the analytical rubric if the activity needs it. Okay? It has to be aligned with the expected output in your syllabi, right? Assess assessing the understanding and skills. How the student able to execute? How the student able to infer and understand particular concepts? Whether it is in physics, chemistry, general science, or in even in biology. And lastly, the community-centered, okay? We get to involve our stakeholders. It is not just a, a teacher-to-student relationship, but rather a community-based relationship, part of which the mandate of the trifocalization of government systems with respect to education. What I am referring to trifocalization is that my slide a while back, we have the Department of Education for Basic Education, the TESDA or the Techno, uh, Technical Education, and the Commission on Higher Education for the SOOCs or state universities and colleges or higher education institutions. In the community center, we have here the classroom and school communities working together in a university, it is one of the mandate through extension, wherein you have to share so that the community could benefit from the learning they have learned from the activity you share to them. All right? Connections to broader communities. As one of the goals of the university is to what? Is to enhance internationalization going beyond crossing boundaries. That is also, I believe, I'd like to believe, one way of addressing the ASEAN community. And of course, we have to build strong ties between the school and the community. Okay? Next, please. So I have here some of the evidences on science teaching uh, performed by our uh, respective science professors in the College of Development Education. I have here uh, the lecture series, or the, rather the lecture class of Professor Charlie Nacario on the uh, contextualizing, addressing, assessing education in the science context. He actually uh, able to integrate mother tongue because his learners are elementary education students. He did well performing this or fusion with the mother tongue languages in discussing his topic. Also, he pinpointed the sustainability initiatives, the SDGs, in his particular topic. Because we cannot do away what the sustainable development goal now are asking towards or asking from us. Right? Next, please. I have also the class of Associate Professor Dr. Melinda Pan. She is here with us this morning. She did well in her laboratory class. I observed her from the very beginning up until the activity of the class. She let her student do the tasking. The science education is well rooted on two theories, and these are progressivism and constructivism by Dewey. And this 
a particular mantra of progressivism is learning by doing. So you just let give the instruction to your learners, let them perform. While they are performing, they are learning. Because they don't need your, your um, actual, uh, I mean, you, you, you don't need, you, you just need rather, you just need to let your student learn from your instruction and you let them do the instructions. Experiential learning. All right? And we have here now also, the last one I'd like to believe, the lecture based in environmental science class of Professor Mary Grace Polvorisa. She is also with us this, uh, this morning, wherein she emphasized the historical basis we cannot simply move to a more complex ideology without looking back to the most simple one. As easy as that. You cannot understand a myriad complexity in terms of your topic without looking into the root of it, without looking into the history of it. So that's what Professor Mary Grace Polverisa shared in her class in environmental science. All right? So... Also, we have, if, if we have the tertiary education, we have also the secondary education. I was able to observe the class of Professor Glenn Redesilia, but this is not in science, but it is in mathematics. He actually did a lot of strategies, a lot of uh, methodologies for his student to learn from his topic. And if I'm going to recall, this topic is about probability, the dependent and independent probability. That is also being integrated, can be integrated in genetics, right? In science. So in making a learning plan, you don't just limit yourself to the topic itself. You can actually fuse other integrative concepts. So by doing such, all of the students in the class are very participative. He little by little fused to them what the curriculum guide in mathematics would want them, the best, what would want the curriculum guide get from, from the topic or from the standard. Okay? So I think that would be all an overview of the Philippine education system. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much to our resource speakers. We have learned very much from your lectures and I'm very sure that our audience here, the students have so much to learn from your lectures as well as I had. So now let's move on to the open forum to be moderated by Mom Christia. Thank you so much, sir. So at this moment, we shall now um, entertain the questions of our students for our two lectures we have this morning, Professor Takuya and Professor Ken. So if you have questions, kindly raise your hand so they can address your queries. How about questions from bseb 3 b Anyone? I know that you guys are very much interested about the topics. Yes, sir. Good morning, po. Um, I question po to Professor Takuya. Sir, you've said in your lecture that um, the education, the curriculum of the Japan in, in Japan, Japan is um, amended or revised every ten years. So its implement, implementation was it abrupt? Or does it um, smoothly given to the students to the curriculum? Po. Okay, thank you for your question. So, oh, your meaning is so, so oh, uh, when uh, we revise a new curriculum, so how to adjust it? Teach a little, you mean? Oh, yeah. So, um, 
in our case, so when we open the new revised curriculum, not uh, we prepared about three years preparation. Not next year. Because why? Uh, we have uh, educational board system. So, Minister of Education at the national level, and in each prefecture, uh, prefecture level educational board, and in each city, or uh, of course, the uh, uh, educational board. And so we have the system to inform the meaning of this new curriculum and so on. And uh, parallelly, so uh, textbooks company prepared uh, te new textbooks and they need to pass the certification. So <laughs> we need uh, generally about three years preparation. And uh, if we need to uh, adjust the students. Uh, this means so when you in grade three and probably so you get new curriculum grade six. So how to adjust? Sometimes so content is uh, adding or reducing or uh, step is uh, changing and so on. So we slightly adjust it especially in the uh, compulsory level. Um, but high school level, or just changing the grade. When you uh, enter the uh, high school, or you are grade the new one, but grade two and grade three high school students uh, remain the old one. And so it so depends on the university entrance examination. So um, compulsory and uh, not compulsory, slightly different, but Oh, basically, we need we prepared about three years changing time. Is it okay? Thank you so much. So we were able to answer your question. Po. Yes, po. so there is a preparation of three years before the implementation of a new curriculum, and it it starts with the top management up to the members who were who will probably implement the main curriculum. So other questions from 3B? Ano pang section ang meron dito? Ah, okay. 3B lang. How about the other students? Do you have questions for Sir Ken or to Professor? Another question. Another question for Sir. Um, what strategies for what sort of strategies in the teaching in the classroom po on Japan on the um, Hiroshima University does professor or teachers use that your students are highly or excellently in, um, in technology. So what sort of strategies or teaching strategies do your professors for perform in science classrooms for? Thank you again. So, mm, this is, important and the difficult point. So basically, so in my case, so I don't like, please use this strategies fixedly. Please, um, I, this means so uh, it is better teaching for adjusted the flexibility. So of course, based on the framework or the inquiry or problems solving, sorry, but Mm. you or a teacher need to understand the meaning of the contents or what is the important point, what is the, uh, what can you teach the skills or ability through teaching this content and so on. So this means the uh, knowledge aspect and the ability aspect and so on. So, Oh, this is a basic uh, starting point for teacher. And you need to mm, arrange the teaching steps, oh, especially in the, of course, so we uh, introduce a, a lesson plan and so on, but uh, normally, uh, generally, or oh, every day's teaching, of course, so we do not prepare lesson plan, but 
probably it's uh, many of teachers prepare some um, noting not for your preparation and so on. So please think uh, the um, something like a story for the teaching or a science lesson. What is the problem or what is your stress point or what is the uh, skills or uh, uh, thinking point and so on. So probably I don't uh, answer the directly, <laughs> but uh, of course sometimes so uh, school teacher wants uh, some fixed uh, teaching strategy or something like a named uh, strategy and so on. But I, I don't like that. <laughs> so because why so a teacher need to uh, uh, equip the flexible uh, teaching strategy and so on. But of course, basically, uh, how to motivate and how to think students on. This is an uh, important point, I think. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Takuya. So I'll mainly you focus on the points and the skills that the students need to learn, mainly on the essentials. Is that what you mean, sir? OK. How about you, Madam BP? I will not answer also. Baka maanggutan ako ni Sensei. Anyway, di mo niya naintindihan. Uh, sensei, uh, a while ago, um, you showed uh, sample writings of the teacher on the board. Can you explain or give us a view on how the teacher goes into the writings from the start and how many minutes the teacher stay until the evaluation part? And may I share probably a little based on my experience that they look into the individual performance of the students. Their mantra is no child left behind. They are serious on that. And um, I think um, I write in saying in elementary, they don't have much of a competition. Uh, we are used of having contests and they don't have it. They treat them fairly. And if they need a student who needs more attention, they direct their attention to that student until such time that everybody can go on at an equal phase. That's my idea during my uh, my observation. So, Sensei, maybe you show again or Roman Sensei. Does that mean to be a Wala silang contest, wala silang ganun. Kaya, tagalogin ko na lang. Ang experience ko sa atin, lahat kinokontest from elementary. So, ang idea natin, nakikipag-compete palagi. Kahit sa sasakyan. <laughs> Tinga, seriously. This is one of the things that I, I parang internalized during my three years team in Japan. Kinokompetensya natin lahat. Kahit sa relief, nag-uunahan tayo. Because we are not sure if we will be given. Baka pag nahuri, nawaraan. For them, equal treatment, you get your share anytime you go. Because they are fair, equal to everybody. Even for the wild sensei is preparing, for example, in tramurals, all students, 100%, they participate. On the other hand, for us, those who can only good and a certain sport, sila lang yung nage excel 
meron din sila noon, bakit meron silang magagaling na national players? Because from elementary, they check its students as to their or to what sports they excel. And it is being traced until high school. So the elementary teacher will pass on the record of student A to a high school and you will be monitored. For example, student A is very good in swimming and all schools there has swimming pool in elementary. They can all swim and we cannot swim because it's not in the curriculum, di ba? So, hindi naman natin tayo masisisi. So, yung going back, yung idea ko kanina, for example, you are very good in swimming and in high school, you just change your mind and you want to go running, for example. You will be asked, um, the, the admin, will, the teachers will talk to you and tell you, you have this record for swimming. So, now what's the reason of changing your mind? So they will hone you and you can only join, you can join the club for swimming. So there they start preparing the national athletes. And they do the clubs after lessons, no interruptions. And they end, I think, 220, they're done with their lesson. If you are a teacher there, it's easy implementation, difficult preparation. You will only teach, I think I just taught one lesson sometimes in a day, just for 40 minutes or maximum of three lessons in a day. But that is so rare. Usually two lessons or two classes only in a day. Okay. But it is in elementary. But if you go into high school, since how many years for me? Three years. Three years. So if we are six, ah, seven, ah, grades, ano nga? seven, eight, nine, ten, ah, we call it junior high school. So they call for the middle school is seven, eight, nine. And then high school is 10, 11, 12. But for America, middle school is 7, 8. High school is 9, 10, 11, 12. It's a different. Sa atin tatlo, tatlo. So when you go to high school, it's a different story. Kind of serious now. Senate Sensei. It's so serious that when I attended one class for High school, we went to what school? Kama High School. When we went for that school observation, sorry, tagalogon ko na. They ko hindi niyan sa physics. <laughs> Very high. Because from there, they screen already uh, as to who goes to college, will go to college who will go to a technical school after high school or who will go to job after high school. They implement it very well. Our vision of the senior high school, they are doing it perfectly. So not everybody can go to a university. And a university is only for those who can pass the exam. So if you go to a university, they usually tell you, Atamaga Ides. Many, you are so good, brilliant, highly intellectual, intellectually upright. Ganon. So this is a challenge to all of you, dear students. I often say, you are university students and prove us right. This is how the world see you as university student. Okay? Live by that standard. Okay? So, um, to add a little, um, isa lang yung sinasabi ni sensei for the 
um, strategy, science inquiry. Everything is inquiry. Starts with the inquiry. Lesson study originated in Japan. They learn to ask the questions. Everything is just questions until students will be the one to formulate the response. Lahat lang talaga yan tanong. Okay? So, Sensei will give further uh, insight about what is this one. Okay, so uh, I have to be to uh, explain this blog post. So, of course, this is a, a one of the sample, or so depends on the teacher. Uh, in this case, so elementary science and well uh, uh, figured. So, as far as this is uh, today's topic, uh, this literary uh, circle is uh, today's. Uh, topic or uh, when we drop in the uh, MAC in water, what happened? This means we cannot or uh, visible. Uh, we can show the MAC in the solid situation, but when we put in the water, we cannot. You can show the MAC. No, yeah. So. This is a uh, uh, today's this topic. Um, this area is uh, this means observation. So these are of course teacher writing, but uh, not from the teacher. These co uh, comments from the student. Uh, so um, sorry, I forgot this uh, lesson the detail, <laughs> but probably so. At first. Teacher showed uh, this uh, phenomenon, uh, and um, write down this today's topic: what happened in the in water. And in elementary level, well, many students raise their hands, their hands, so they talk about. So, teacher uh, hearing the some um, student comments. Uh, or notice uh, or uh, question. So, so teacher, uh, of course, it is difficult to all take it. So, teacher uh, thinking the, in her brain and how to um, divide uh, some viewpoints or uh, how to. Uh, connect to the some uh, interesting point and so then uh, she wrote down the student of the result of the student observation and uh, probably so uh, after this observation uh, teacher prepared uh, the other uh, observation context probably Sometimes, oh yeah, probably. So, in this case, so oh, she prepared a tea bag or tea, tea bag and put in the uh, NUSA in the tea bag and um, put on the uh, beaker uh, with water. Probably, oh, you can show the some moya moya <laughs> in Japanese. So depends on the light uh, direction. So these are another result of the ob from the observations. And finally, so they discuss uh, with students, not only from the teacher. Uh, teacher discuss talk with uh, their student or student to student discussing. Probably, so oh, this is a, a, one of the model of the NACL. And probably, so of course, we can show in water, but probably we scattered uh, uh, in the water and so on. Of course, uh, 
they, in, in elementary level, or, uh, it is hard to uh, detect their uh, detail. But uh, in this level, so or the one of the uh, thinking or, uh, yeah, and so on. So this is a um, uh, based from the observation case. So the other case, of course, or teacher prepared some uh, experiment for each uh, group. Each person is very rare, but for each uh, group, teacher prepared some uh, experiment materials. And uh, teacher conduct uh, gathered uh, every uh, group's result and how to think or what is we can find point and so on. So, is this uh, your answer? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. In Japanese? Yeah. So it's in the water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, you, you, this Japanese uh, character, yung parang T, it's ta, when you read that one, it's the aim. And then ka is this one. Ka means uh, this is procedure and doing the activity. And uh, it may be the, some instruction. And then this is read as ha is the output, the observation of students, maybe from different groups. And they decide now which among the observations is best. And this is read as chi is the final or the maybe the conclusion of the ta. So all teachers uh, write these things on the board uh, and it stays there until such time that they will agree kung may agreement yung estudyante. And during their uh, vacant time, students will see and ask teachers until such time na may agreement and they finish that one. Okay. Um, additionally, did you see the picture of the class? Picture? Yeah. No, the, the first one. Ah, okay. This one first. Um, just to science class, middle school. Okay. One, two, three, four. What 
what do you notice my what's that pencil case pencil case yan and uh, they have ruler everything in it each student has and when sensei says you have a textbook everybody if you have 10 textbooks for example all of you will get 10 textbooks each one free until middle school high school no not high school because it's compulsory 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 is from elementary and then middle school so what happened if if parent will not send this children they will what will happen to the parent yeah. it's a compulsory meaning all the parents will be in trouble yes if they will not send students either children to school because they say it's compulsory no excuse okay so what else next one sensei Ado, the other one the classroom the no beautiful kiri okay this one did you see it two teachers table sensei correct i this one and this one six okay this uh, okay not so big school okay so teachers stay inside the classroom uh they have faculty room i guess but they stay inside the classroom until end so na na yung teacher lahat food and all in the classroom Ang, their food is served by their cafeteria for lunch only no snacks snacks tea or water at the back each one brings it students has big mug brings their coffee i know coffee no juice only tea and water okay so they're not allowed students not allowed to drink juice or soda soft drinks in the school and additional not any more science but the science here is that they calculate the kilocalorie content they need per day so this is science biology so you will be conscious in a way by not telling you because you are experiencing and doing it in school and the meal plan of the school in a week i think monthly you give it to the uh, students for a um, monthly basis their meal plan for monthly basis with kilocalorie content and each student is known what are you allergy from allergy ka ngayon sa gatas or whatever okay ganun yung style ng education sa kanila who uh, who help them in serving the food students only no helper uh, so they are being trained from grade 3 sensei grade 3 they serve already grade 3 they grade 3 they bring the loads of uh, rice for example but on a rotation basis until high school from grade 3 very small meal and then as you go up the high school it become big okay so any more question for sensei no more yeah so see the the purpose of this differences is for us to get something good and try to 
if we can, in a way, contextualize our strategy in teaching and uh, considering also reaching out to all our students by not inculcating to them the attitude of competition. Uh, the fairness, equal opportunity for everybody. So this is my thinking when I have that stint to Sensei's laboratory. Thank you so much, Professor um, Takuya. And of course, to our Madam VP, Ma'am Anna, thank you so much. It's very nice that we were able to learn that our VP is very much adept of, of answering queries if you have questions regarding the educational system in Japan. So if you have questions or if you'd like to know more about the Japanese educational system, if we cannot contact Professor Takuya, at least we have with us our Madam VP to answer our questions. So at this point in time, since um, perhaps we can move on with the awarding of certificates. So, sir, um, I will now hand the microphone to our Master of Ceremony. May I now call Ma'am Dean, Ma'am Raquel, for the certification of the certificate. Uh, Ma'am VPM, sorry, Ma'am. For the certification of the certificates or giving of the certificates, this this certificate of commendation is hereby given to Professor Takuya Matsura for his time, effort, and expertise as resource speaker on the topic classroom practices in science education in the Japanese context during the academic collaboration with Hiroshima University on March 7, 2023. Given this seventh day of March 2023 at the College of Development Education, Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, San Jose Pili, Camarines, or Philippines. Now for the next certificate. This certificate of appreciation is hereby given to <laughs> this certificate of appreciation is hereby given to Professor Takuya Matsura in grateful recognition and appreciation of his contribution to the academic collaboration with Hiroshima University on March 6, 2023, thereby contributing immeasurably to the success of the activity. Given this seventh day of March 2023 at the Alvaro Rabina Hall, Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, San Jose, Pili Camarines, or Philippines. <laughs> And lastly, for the Certificate of Commendation, this Certificate of Commendation is hereby given to Sir Kennedy A. Beltran for his time, effort, and expertise as a resource speaker on the topic Classroom Practices in Science Education in the Philippine Context during the academic collaboration with Hiroshima University on March 7, 2023. Given this seventh day of March 2023 at the College of Development Education, Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, San Jose, Pili, Camarines, or Philippines.
Mom, any last message for this activity? Minasang, uh, arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much to all of you. And to the Dean of the College of Development Education, the Chairperson, and the faculty members who participated. BSU students and our students, of course, we are doing this to all because we love you all. Okay, so, and of course, we want to open your eyes and door to many opportunities that await you. This could be an eye opener to some of you that there are my right or various activities outside or outside the Philippines or abroad. The only key is just do your job well without competition. But collaboration is the key. <laughs> Okay. Hiroshima University and CBSA. To all our viewers, thank you for joining us and mabuhay po tayong lahat. Salamat po. Viewers, to answer the evaluation form, which is in the comments. Thank you for watching and have a good day.